Hi, welcome to this lecture on Bayes theorem. Here we'll try to develop a very simple intuitive understanding of what exactly this theorem is trying to say. And in this lecture, I'll also try to set up the mathematical description of this theorem, but we'll focus more on what is the logical intuition behind it. So let's take an example where we are looking at cases of breast cancer in women. So let's say the data is something like 1% of women have breast cancer. This data may not be accurate, but uh, let's not consider that for a moment. Let's just focus on the idea, idea being conveyed here. So if 1% of the women have breast cancer, there is something called mammogram. It's like you take x-ray of the breast and you can see the occurrence of brain uh, of breast cancer in the uh, chest x-ray, in the breast x-ray. So let's say in this mammogram, 80% of the times you can detect breast cancer if it is there, which means in 20% of the cases when breast cancer is present, you cannot detect it, right? The mammogram will not identify that there is breast cancer in 20% of the cases. That's what this, that is also one of the things that this se second statement is saying. And the third one says 9.6% of mammograms detect breast cancer when it is not there. So these are also called false positives because you are saying that, yes, there is breast cancer, but it's a false information. So these are this 9.6% of the cases uh, of mammogram can give you false positives. Uh, so what is actually um, the remaining cases in 90%, percent, 90.4% of the cases, you can have a mammogram detect breast cancer and it to be actually there right that's what that's also what this third statement says now let's put all of this into a table format so that you can easily understand right so we have uh, first column corresponding to cancer second column corresponding to no cancer so one percent of the chance there is one percent chance that women can have cancer breast cancer so that is one person written here and 99 percentage chance that they do not have cancer now the first row what it says is if someone is being tested positive for breast cancer there is 80 percentage chance that uh, if someone has cancer 80 percent chance that the mammogram will test positive but if someone has cancer there is 20 percent chance that someone will not test positive meaning someone will test negative that's what the mammogram accuracy said right in 80 percent of the uh, cases when someone has cancer mammogram will detect meaning if in 20 percent of the case when someone has cancer mammogram will test negative now let's come to the no cancer case in no cancer case which is the most predominant case 9.6 percentage of the cases will show positive testing 90.4 percentage of the cases will show negative testing which is fine now, let's say you are asked a question like this. Suppose somebody does a mammogram test and they get a positive result. What is the actual chance that they have cancer? Is it 1%? Because 1% of the population has cancer, 1% of women have can uh, breast cancer. Is it 1%? Is it 80%? Because... Uh, a mammogram is correct. A mammogram can detect 80% of the cases when there is an occurrence of breast cancer. Is it 80% or is it something else? So, although this may look like a very easy question to answer, it is a little bit tricky because the logic behind that is not as trivial as what you would imagine. And this is exactly where Bayes theorem actually helps you. So, before even looking at or coming to the formal definition of Bayes theorem, let us look at the logic here just based on this table right in how many ways can you get positive res uh, test result you can get a positive mammogram result in two ways one is you have cancer and uh, you are getting a positive result that is first case second case is you don't have cancer and you are getting a positive result in the first case it's called a true positive in the second case it's called a false positive so you can you can get cancer uh, like you can get a positive test result as a result of cancer. You can get a positive test result as a result of no cancer also. Now let's calculate the chance. Let's calculate the chance of a positive result and cancer. So that will be nothing but chance of chance for having cancer for someone is uh, one percentage that multiplied by 80 percentage, 80 percentage because um, to get positive result and cancer, 
it's one percentage multiplied by 80 percentage this one cancer and positive result is one percentage multiplied by 80 percentage so that is 0 0.8 percentage and for someone to have no cancer and positive result is 99 percentage multiplied by 9.6 percentage so 99 multiplied by 9.6 percentage this is 9.504 percentage now this is a true positive this is a false positive in both of these cases someone can get a positive test result now what is the chance of actually having cancer given you have a positive result the chance of actually having cancer is chance of true positive divided by chance of any positive because if something is true positive it means you have gotten a positive test result and you have cancer and chance of any positive is the sum of chance of something to be true positive and chance of something to be false positive so this is nothing but 0 0.8 which is this divided by 0 0.8 plus 9.504 percentage and this turns out to be a uh, 7.76 percentage um, here if you simply divide you will get a fraction but then you multiply it by 100 you get 7.76 percentage now this is a fascinating result because although mammograms are correct 80 percentage of the times when there is cancer it does not mean that when you have a positive test result from mammogram you have cancer only 7.76 percentage chance you still have so if you have a mammogram test result being positive it's not that 80 percent you have cancer it's only 7.76 percentage that you have breast cancer the reason for this being there are a huge number of cases simply because of the false positives because 99 percentage of the population do not have breast cancer yet there are 9.6 percentage chances of a false positive which means there are a, there is a huge big group of people in this in this meaning if you you could you could have also belonged to this group of people who were tested as false positives right so that is the reason why this probability for you having actual cancer is much lower so this is extremely interesting it's not intuitive also it's not intuitive because you will feel like oh if a test is 80 percent can 80 percent uh times detect the cancer if it's present and then if it is giving you positive result then probably the result is true that's what you will think but here you you are essentially saying that there is a 92.24 percentage chance that you don't have cancer see how how kind of reassuring this result is even when the mammogram is saying there is positive test result it still means 92.24 percentage there is uh, chance of not having breast cancer now we can also calculate this this number a little bit intuitively right uh, without taking without doing such rigorous calculations so uh, if let's say there are 100 people um, in one out of 100 cases there is no cancer and uh, here what what we are saying is the test result is positive in 80 percent of the cases right so let's say eight out of ten times it's correct but then we have um, let's say this is 10 percentage and no cancer so what this means is if there are 100 people if there are 100 people roughly one person will have actually cancer out of um true positive is again one person but then since there are 100 people and 10 percent of the cases are true uh, false positives 10 people will get results uh, which are which says there is cancer but they are all false positive so roughly we can calculate that this is like around 1 by 11 uh, and 1 by 11 is also something very very close to what we calculated this is 9.09 .09. so this is a rough back of the envelope calculation but there is a 9.09 percentage chance there is only a 9.09 .09 percentage chance. just uh, just as a back of the envelope calculation uh what we calculated here with proper actual numbers is 7.76 percentage calculation so this is the intuition behind um calculating this now what base theorem does is exactly what we discussed in this table so base theorem converts whatever we discussed this table in this table into a into an equation so it allows us to take the test results right so the test results are positive let's say and it allows us to correct for the skewness because this skewness is introduced by the fact that there are there can be a lot of false positives 
there can be a lot of test results that are saying the can there is cancer but still it's it's saying it as a false positive and that is what we can write here in this form of equation so chance that cancer is real given a positive test equal to chance for something to be true positive divided by chance for all positives which means chance of true positives plus false positives now can we write this in the form of an equation the equation is this so here c for cancer positive for positive test result nc means no cancer maybe i can write it here so c is cancer nc is no cancer and uh, positive means positive test result uh, no need to say that so probability for having cancer so this is how you read it this vertical bar and a probability statement like this is probability for having cancer given positive test result equal to probability for having cancer uh, times probability to get positive results given cancer this is the true positive and that's exactly what we did in the table above in the table above we did one percentage multiplied by 80 percentage and this divided by the same thing plus so this is this whole numerator is true positive now this is true positive and this is what probability to have no cancer multiplied by probability to get positive result given no cancer so this this is called false positive so this is nothing but true positive divided by true positive plus false positive we can also write the same thing in this format uh, probability of a given b so probability for cancer given positive result is equal to probability for b given a times a, uh, sorry pro probability for b given a times probability for a meaning probability for getting uh, a positive result given someone has cancer times probability for someone to act uh, people to have cancer in the in our example it was one percentage divided by all the different ways in which someone can get a positive result a positive result can be obtained if someone has cancer as a true positive and as someone if someone does not have cancer as a false positive so that is what p of b means here so when you whenever you see, uh, see base theorem with this kind of a formula p of a given b equal to p of b b given a times p of a divided by p of b just think uh, of an even simpler formula it is simply true positive divided by true positive plus false positive so p of something to be positive given um given let's say given some other condition i don't know what to write this condition that's that's condition is true positive divided by true positives plus false positive so this is what Bayes theorem is trying to say. So although this equation from this equation is very hard for you to get that intuition, if you if you keep this in your mind or if you think from the point of view of this table, uh, this table you can easily understand the significance of Bayes theorem. Because what really blows my mind is the fact that although the mammogram test test is eighty percentage good for detecting ca cancerous cases even when you get a positive result from the test you still don't have cancer with a 92.24 percentage probability so that is really really a mind-blowing insight now uh, there are applications within machine learning for uh, things like bayesian uh, spam filtering so if you have an email spam filter uh, which detects spam based on uh, the content within the email then you cannot simply create a spam filter by just looking at the, the words in that email. A classic example is that of the spam email consisting of the word Nigerian prince. So there is this classic uh, Nigerian. So there is this scam which says Nigerian prince wants to offer you money and uh, but his money is stuck in some bank account. So to unfreeze the account, you should send some five thousand dollars. And if you help the prince with that, the prince will send you one million dollars after the bank account is accessible again. So let's say you have hundred. Uh, let's say you have ten k emails you are receiving, out of which uh, hundred are spam, and uh, nine thousand nine hundred are not spam. And this is something that we discussed in one of the previous uh, videos as well. But I just wanted to 
uh, recap this and out of this 100 spam emails let's say 90 of them have the word nigerian prints np meaning nigerian prints and 10 emails do not have nigerian prints no nigerian prints word and out of this 9900 non spam email let's say 50 of them have the word nigerian prints now you might be wondering why these 50 emails have nigerian prints word maybe because they are educational emails like they these emails are trying to educate people about this nigerian prints scam uh, and let's say remaining 9850 emails have no nigerian prints word in it right now this also this situation also we can write uh, as a table so there is a probability for email to be spam and no spam and then there is a there is a probability i mean there is a case where nigerian prints word is there in the email and there is a case where no such word exists in the email email content and spam probability is what 10 uh, 100 out of 10k emails right so 100 out of 10k emails are spam 9900 emails out of 10k are not spam and nigerian prints word in the spam emails 90 out of 100 emails have nigerian prints word and 10 out of 100 do not have nigerian prints and in the no spam category um how many have the word nigerian prints 50 50 emails contain the word nigerian prints so 50 out of 9900 so 50 out of 9900 they have the word nigerian prints and 1 minus 50 out of 9900 they do not have the word uh nigerian prints and they are not not spam now this table is exactly similar to the above uh breast cancer example table right now if someone is asking you the question given the word nigerian prints prints is found in an email uh calculate the probability for something to be spam for that email to be spam let's say this this is asked now the nigerian prints word can be present in an, in an email if it is spam and if it is not spam also so now uh how what is the probability for np to be there and something to be spam it is nothing but this multiplied by this so 100 divided by 10k multiplied by 90 divided by 100 these are the cases where something is spam and nigerian prints word is present then you divide that by same thing there are total number of how many there are total number of cases where nigerian prints word can be present is if something is spam and nigerian prints is present something is not spam and nigerian prints is present so that is 100 divided by 9 uh, 10k times 90 divided by 100 plus this multiplied by this 9900 divided by 10k times uh, 50 divided by 9900 so now we can do some uh, simplification 100 100 gone 100 100 gone 10k 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 gone 9900 and 9900 gone so this will be 90 divided by 90 plus 50 equal to 90 divided by 140 and that will be 64.2 percentage so there is a 64.2 percentage chance that if an email contains the word nigerian prints it is actually a spam and your machine learning algorithm or whatever algorithm you are using it should classify so this is how you use naive bayesian um, conditions or this bayesian theorem for devising spam filters because if you only look for certain words and blacklist email based on the presence of those words you are doing a you're doing a mistake because there could be some legit educational emails which may contain these words so that's the reason why these ml algorithms uh, should consider such uh, conditional probability cases so uh, base base theorem is a very important concept in ml there is even something called uh, naive base classifier uh, is a traditional machine learning model even in one of uh, the recent papers that we published which got accepted to neurips conference we had used a uh, naive bayesian classifier as one of the models in our paper so um, i hope this brings you some fairly good clarity on base theorem not just from a mathematical point of view but more from a intuitive point of view and uh, Thank you so much for uh, listening and we'll see you again in another video like this. So take care until then. Bye.